a part of me feels like I need to break that stereotype down. Like, no, not everybody don't act like that. People do want to come back and help when show you how to get out, show you what it took me, you know, for me to get out of here and, and pro hopefully pass on some knowledge and get the community back, um, you know, around helping kids, you know, be the best that they can be. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Check Up, the series where you get to know your favorite WNBA players. And today I am quite excited because I have the four-time WNBA champion, three-time Olympian, eight-time All-Star, and the ugliest person I know, my best friend, Simone Augustus. <laughs> Really? I'm in here. I mean, they told me I had to work on my woe. Yeah, so you do. I mean, you kind of washed. So. Who? No, I mean, these kids coming up with all these dances, they don't even know. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like our stuff was way harder, you know? Like the, the chicken head and stuff? The chicken. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> we had to really get up in a bank head, bounce, all that. They don't know nothing about nothing. Today, I got to, you know, watch what I say. I'm excited because I get to talk my mess, but I have to watch what I say because for those of you that don't know, one of her little dusty fans reported me on Instagram <laughs> and had me on probation for like a, two months for calling her ugly on her page. So, I don't know if you can report this video for abuse, but I'm Re definitely gonna get my jokes in today. Report, report. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. So let's start with uh, this season. It, it was an interesting start for y'all. You had uh, Way, obviously was retiring. Uh -huh. um, Brunson isn't playing this summer. And then you had the bombshell with Maya deciding to take the summer off. And after all of that, pretty much everybody was like, y'all going to be trash. They, they pretty much threw y'all under the bus. Y'all yeah. were going to be terrible. And it was all this talk that Minnesota's going to lose it and it's going to be trash. And y'all came out this season and have really, like... Let them know. Y'all been hooping. All right. Even man. with all the injuries you had with Jess Shepard, um, Demira's being out for a little bit, you're not playing... Um, and then Karima, yeah, just uh, now she's going to be out for the season. So y'all have had to go through a lot already and still have been able to hold to your own. Did you have any doubts coming into the season about what this team was going to look like? I mean, I would be lying if I said I didn't have, like, anxiety or fear of what the team was going to be. When you lose a player like Waylon or Bronson or, you know, Maya, like, you know, you kind of wonder, like, oh, my God, like, what are we going to get? You got to jump into that. We never really had to worry about free agency and jumping in there because our five has always been set with just kind of the bench players, you know, that we had to focus on, you know, uh, building. But, you know, um, once we started to put the team together, we we wanted to get Christmas. We ended up getting her. Um, you know, Lexi, I, I, I don't know how we got Lexi, but through a trade or whatever, we ended up getting her. So pieces just started to come together. Then when we got the mirrors back, I was like, whoa, like, you know, we starting to get a little, get a little something going here, you know, and obviously I worked my butt off, worked my ass off in the, in the uh, off season to get back. Sylvia did the same. So I'm like, long as we got two people that know how to win, know what it took to win, and we can kind of pass our knowledge on to the younger players, it'll be good. But um, obviously I'm not playing, so my role is different, which is a good thing because now that I've been on the sideline for like four or six weeks, we needed that. It's a young team of young players who have come from other teams, didn't get a lot of playing time, didn't get a lot of respect. And so they have a lot to prove. And that's the scariest thing ever um, when you find players that want to work hard and have a lot to prove like they're going to come out and play their ass off and that's the difference between our team and maybe other teams at this point like even in preseason we were getting praised for how hard we played and i'm like this is every day at practice like these girls come in here get work in and even after we finish practice they getting shots up like we don't have to ask them like right now in this day and age like you got to tell the younger players like get in the gym come on work out like all of these players have been great with their development their growth throughout the you know, from training camp to now. So um, I think that kind of wiped my fear and anxiety away after I seen how hard they work. I can deal with having a, um, a player that worked that hard. What's the saying? Like hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. Well, you got a talented team that works hard. And so everything is working out. You didn't have any moment where you were a little worried and like, you know, beforehand, before you even got into the groove and saw what you guys were getting, where you were like, everybody's dropping out. I mean, maybe I need to take a summer off and chill. And like. Nah, I actually, I wasn't like I wanted to take no summer off, but I was like, oh shit, no. Like, 
what's about to happen here because I didn't know a lot of the players game like I ain't know Lexi can just flat out hoop like we got coach like I didn't know what she brought to the table um Demiris obviously then got way better than when she was with us the first time go around um oh you know we knew from playing against her what she could bring to the table D-Rob hadn't really had great seasons um leading up into this but we knew what she's capable we know what she's capable of like no, I never thought about like, shit, I'm going to just take this season off and just chill and come back. Like, I'm a competitor at heart. Like, I'm going to go out there and like, this is my last two seasons. So I'm like, I'm going out with a bang. Like, I'm going to just hoop, hoop as much as I can, as hard as I can and let the chips fall where they may. And right now it's looking real good. We're in a great position. I think we like two games outside the first place. And people didn't even think we were going to be in that. They thought we was going to be at the bottom of the barrel. So I'm happy with everything. So moving on from this season a little bit. Um, you haven't gone overseas in a couple years now. I and I know that a lot of fans often ask me, I don't know why, because I haven't always been a part of this, but <laughs> if like players that don't go overseas, what are they doing in the off season, especially be being that, you know, overseas is such a big source of our income usually. Um, a lot of fans wonder what happens in the off season for a player that doesn't go and you haven't gone for a couple years now so what does your off season look like yeah, the same as your off season you've been building your brand like that's what you're trying to figure out life after basketball when you start to take that time off um you know what it is that you're passionate about because we've been fortunate enough to do something that we've been passionate about for a long time so it would suck to go into your life after basketball and do something like that you hate to do like oh i just got to make a living you know so you're trying to figure that out but also trying to figure out ways to impact your community so um my off season has consisted of you know, figuring out my clothing line, uh, Untouchable Styles, which is a brand that's going to hopefully bring some cool apparel to the WNBA uh, fans. And, you know, maybe even not, maybe just the fashion world, like people pick up on it. And that's free advertising and marketing for the WNBA to have cool stuff being displayed in the fashion world. Um, and then also community stuff like basketball. I had the Elk Soup Shoot competition um, last year that did good. We actually had three out of six of my contestants that went on to the state level and one went on to nationals. Um, she did good. I think she placed like six, got a little nervous um, once she got, it was here actually in Chicago. It was in Chicago and she did pretty good. So looking for that to obviously get better next year. Planning on some two on two, three on three tournaments. Um, as well as uh, Bayou Battle of Champions, which is bringing all the champions together for a girls' high school state basketball in Louisiana, bringing them champions together from each class and let them just fight it out. Like you say you're a champion, but who's really the champion, you know? So you mentioned all these tournaments that you've had, you know, that you've been working to get into Baton Rouge. You did the Elks Hoop Shoot and the Free Throw Contest um, and the tournament champions you've been working on and hopefully do soon. I think, did you actually finish the middle school tournament last year did y'all actually finish it and get that done or are you no, still working in on the it? works it's in the works man it's like that i have been away so then that's another thing like when you <laughs> you've been away playing ball for so long it's been 10 years of going overseas i've been away so i don't know what the basketball scene is like so then you got to figure out what the scene is like what schools are doing this what you know administration like you got to start connecting and networking with people to get what you're trying to do so right now it's mostly in a networking phase as far as the tournaments go the only thing that's really off the ground is the elk soup soup competition so everything else is in kind of uh, infancy phase of, of um, coming together so you've been working on that for a while and you've had the opportunity to do some stuff nationally but it seems like you always seem to go back to Louisiana what is the importance of bringing those opportunities those basketball opportunities and tournaments back to Baton Rouge for you well for me um not many of us have like how many how many professional athletes you had come to your school well I mean you went to Probably. Like, yeah, yeah, you're fancy up in here, but like I can't think of anybody that was able to come back, let alone like make it out of Louisiana to become successful at that level to then come back and give back. Most people leave and they never come back. Like they just live their lives and you know eat their chicken wings and drink mimosas and chill. Like, but somewhere like in my heart, I feel like I have to like give these kids some type of motivation, encouragement. Like let them see me, feel me, touch me, talk to me. Um, Cause you don't know what that does, what kind of impact that has on them. When I go home, that's what, like when I talk to people, like I'm real chill, like I'm sitting here talking to y'all and they're like, you don't act like no star. And I'm like, what is a star supposed to act like? Like, I don't know what you mean, but I guess it's whatever they see on TV, however they see the guys or whoever. 
walk past people don't give autographs and all this kind of stuff like they got that built up in their mind so um a part of me feels like i need to break that stereotype down like no not everybody don't act like that people do want to come back and help when show you how to get out show you what it took me you know for me to get out of here and, and pro hopefully pass on some knowledge and get the community back um you know around helping kids you know be the best that they can be you mentioned untouchable style um and how you're working to get that into production. Um, what is that looking like as far as what, how you're gonna connect it to the WNBA and the clothing that you wanna put out? Yeah, it's strictly that, just WNBA apparel. So basically I'm trying to become the Mitchell and Ness of women's basketball, women's sports. Like right now I'm starting with the WNBA and I would be lying if I didn't say it was intimidating. Like I'm stepping into something that I know, like I love fashion. I went to school for fashion, took a couple of semesters and then had to change my major because it started to conflict with basketball and, and all that stuff. But um, I don't know it. Like I'm learning it as I go. And so I'm like, oh yeah, I want to make jerseys. So you got to go get a license. All right, cool. Like, where's the application? Applications like this thick. I'm like half of this stuff I can't even fill out. Like, so it's like a process, a growing process, learning process, as well as getting over the fear of like stepping outside of your element, outside of your comfort zone. Like, all right, if this is something you want to do, you got to keep pushing for keep pushing forward like I've had many no's I've had people that try to help don't know where to go to help where to send me who to talk to like it's it's really been kind of discouraging in a way and every time I'm like at that point where I'm like ah I, I think I'm gonna just chill somebody comes along like nah I keep pushing like it's breaking through or something happens and I'm like all right cool I'm gonna keep going um so right now it's still in a development phase like the graphic design, artwork, and all that stuff is, has come along. Um, I'm filling out, still filling out the application because as I go through that process, it's like, oh, okay, now I can fill this portion out. Um, the samples are coming along. So once I get the samples and all that stuff, I hope like I'll be able to, you know, have you do do a little segment on me. You already come know. And see the, come and see the gear and stuff. So it's coming. And I think people are like it because I don't know why people are stuck on like, a woman's jersey like it should fit it should feel like a woman's jersey so then I'm eliminating half of the consumers because men are, aren't gonna wear that so in my mind I'm like for so long whenever you wanted an NBA jersey or whatever what did you get like a male jersey like what you got on right now you got the t-shirt on underneath it because it's cut like a male cut so I'm gonna play off of that idea and concept as well as play off of some of the NBA throwback kind of vibes um, you know, because we don't get many jerseys. Literally, people, the WNBA only get a home and away jersey. That's you get it. two colors. You don't get That's the it. Hispanic, Latino night like the guys get and go green and what other uh, stuff they get. Like, we get breast health. Like, yeah. We, we get, get breast, breast health awareness. I think that's it, though. I can't. I remember the yeah. one year we did the Title IX jerseys, yeah, but that okay. was like a one year. Like we didn't yeah, do that for the every anniversary year. of Title IX, yeah. like years ago. But we get a home and away. So I wanted to just play off of the NBA jerseys, um, whether it's the teams that are in their region or just teams that fit the logos. Like a lot of our WNBA teams have logos that kind of funk out with the NBA. So I'm swapping and switching out some things. So it'll be cool if I had the graphic stuff here. Well, actually, I don't want to do it right now because I got to get a patent. You know, people be out here stealing. <laughs> they be out here stealing. So I got to protect myself. But once everything is good, then I'll show y'all what I came up with. I mean, I'm really excited for it because I feel like we don't have enough of that. And that's something, I, you know, I, I talk about a lot. The reason that I want to do this series and start my production company, we've discussed it a lot, is that, you know, we don't have a lot of the avenues and, and areas for the fans to get more involved and to dive into storylines mm -hmm. and to be like all in as a fan in the way that the NBA side can, you know, mm -hmm. like they, when you're a fan of somebody on the NBA, you can get their jersey, you can get this t-shirt, you can do this, you can see, watch this storyline, you can see what they were doing here. And then like, we don't have any of that. And it's like, I know our fans want it. Even with like the, the, the Nike, the new Nike jerseys, I've heard mm -hmm. complaints about how like the men can't get, the men that do want to get them, the sizes that they can get them, it's like those 
swap meet jerseys, like the cheap ones, not the actual Nike ones. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to get them because they don't want the, the crap ones. Thank you. Thank <laughs> like, you. So I'm trying to create quality, quality over quantity. I think when people do make stuff, that's what they think. Quantity, we got to sell a whole lot. Like, no, nah, I want people to fill this joint, like have this around. Like I used to laugh at my mother because she saved everything. But now when I go back and um, I'm like finding starter jackets and all my throwback jerseys that I had, like that stuff lasted through all time. Like this is shit I bought in like middle school. That's still like, I could put it, wash it, put it on right now. That mean that was great quality, yeah. that it didn't fall apart. Like here it is 20 years later. That's the shit that I'm trying to make. Like I want people to appreciate it, know it, grow it, whatever they want to do with it. Like, and then the advertisement, like we complain about marketing. What better way to do it than through fashion? There's a lot of people that's gonna buy it because they're fans of the W. There's a lot of people that's gonna buy it because it go with some sneakers or go with this fresh fit that they got. There's free advertisement or if they may educate themselves. If you run into enough people that's like, yo, where you get that jersey from? Like, what is that jersey? Then you gotta go educate yourself on like, oh, I got it from Foot Locker, it was WNBA jersey. Well, who is that on your back? Tisha Penichero or Elena Deladon, Simone that's like, you know, it makes people wanna know more about this brand because more people rocking it and wearing it. People that never saw it, they, they haven't put eyes on it, are finally gonna get a taste of what the WNBA is. Yeah, and especially with, you know, the whole sneaker sneaker culture now, you know, people want stuff that's like, matching they, they outfit and they shoes. And if you're coming up with some crazy colors, people are gonna be attentive to that and want to buy it. It doesn't even necessarily like have to be something that they know about, like you said. They're just like, oh, that's a dope colorway. I'm gonna get that because it matches these sneakers I got. Like, <laughs> exactly, and we got some crazy colors like in the WNBA. Like, think about Dallas. Like, Dallas colors are crazy. If you see the jersey I got for Dallas, y'all gonna be like, whoa, like this is dope. Like, so that's what that was part of my, um. My vibe for this year with the jerseys, like, I wanted to, you know, if I ain't nobody else gonna celebrate me, I'm gonna celebrate me. So I was like, yo, I'm gonna pull out all my stuff, um, you know, out of storage before I frame it and put it in my house and all that and just kind of rock, rock my jerseys with my sneakers. And everybody was like, yo, that's dope. Like, where you get that from? Da -da -da. Your jersey, that jersey for sale? Like, nah, but I just wanted to get the response from the people. And I've gotten rave reviews about that. Like, people are waiting. I'm like, I got you. I hit them in the DM. Like, I got you. I'm a, It actually made me think about this stuff because I never thought about, like, high school jerseys, college jerseys, maybe even overseas jerseys. Like, now y'all done opened up my head. I was like, oh, this might be bigger than the W. Like, so I'm trying to figure out like the graphics on that stuff too, because I think people are liking it. And I have people, somebody reached out to me from the NCAA and was like, you want to do some NCAA jerseys and stuff. So I could Ooh. reach back in there and, 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 and get some of that stuff. I think people would like that, man. Like rock, you know, a dope. Skylar Diggins jersey from Notre Dame or yep. whoever, like Candace Parker from Tennessee. Like, though I don't like the balls like that because of the rivalry, <laughs> I got some smooth ass blue kicks and, and like some um some J's that I could rock with a fucking Candace Parker tee. Like, yo. Yeah, that would be clean. Yeah. That would be nice. You need to go ahead and set that Even a you. Bit. I saw your little picture at the Hall of Fame. Oh. <laughs> that colorway, like, no, nah, it was like black, yeah. gray, and white or whatever. Yeah. Just, what? I got some Jordan Nines at the crib. I'm like, oh, I can represent. <laughs> I have to put little Peter's high school jersey on, man. That's right. gonna be dope. I'm actually really excited about, I'm really excited that you got to announce it on here because I've been, you know, in your ear and we've been yeah. going back and forth about this for like a year and talking about this. Yeah. So I'm excited, I can't wait. I'm gonna buy all of them jerseys and I can't wait to rock them. I think, I mean, I think that's gonna be huge for the W because that's the type of stuff that we need and the type of stuff that I've been telling people that, you know, it's players out here that's grinding and working on stuff to make this league better. And I think they've, you know, we've made steps this year, like even with you wearing your jerseys, the whole like fashion push that they're making right mm -hmm. now um, and showing all the players with their pre uh, post game outfits, pre game outfits and all that stuff yeah. um, is really like put you in the space to be able to push what you're actually trying to do later. So it's great. Like, you already got a little bit of marketing <laughs> yeah, in there exactly. already for free. Exactly. I just wish I had the prototypes, man, because then if I bust one of them out online, it would be crazy. Yeah, you got to be ready, though, for when you're going to sell that. Because <laughs> cool. you will you gonna have it. You already know it's going to go crazy. So you need to, like, that needs to be, like, your little soft opening. 
you busting out one of them jerseys one of them at the game. Yeah. That's what I thought. I was like, you know, things happen for a reason because I actually had planned on putting some stuff out for um, All Star. I was planning on trying to have a little dry run or with a pop up shop or whatever. And I was like, eh, things didn't work out. Samples didn't get made in the time. Blah 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 blah. Twenty twenty is looking real nice for a little runway show on my own. Like, uh, twenty twenty. That would be nice. The walk in for twenty twenty. Y'all better watch out. It's that would be, be dope. dope. I'm excited for it. So to finish off every segment, oh, we nice. have five questions that you have to answer. Okay. okay. First question is always the same. If you never played basketball in your life at any point, in like never from childhood up, what would be your career? Shit, what I'm about to do. <laughs> fashion, like legit fashion. I, I love that shit. Like, I just remember like my aunt, my aunt used to take me school shop. I couldn't wait to go school shopping. That was, I mean, I guess that was the thing for all black people. Like what? First, I had the first week though. Like most people had that first no, day. No, we laid out the first day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all had the first, I had the first week because I had an auntie who loved the shop. So she knew where all the bargain shopping was. And then she all knew the tricks of the trade, like way people hid their little stash in the store. Cause some people didn't have the cash to get it right away. They didn't want to put it on a little way, blah, blah, blah. So she'd be like, you gotta look inside the rack. Like that's where people be hanging their clothes on. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, auntie, <laughs> I used to have the polos and all that stuff. So nah, if I wasn't playing ball for sure to be in fashion, like something, I don't know if I'll be styling somebody or making clothes, but it'll be somewhere up in there. All right, I'll take it. Uh, if you could play for any WNBA team that folded, who would it be and why? Ah, oh, any WNBA team that folded. So who we got? Um, Charlotte, Charlotte, Miami, Sac, mm. uh, Houston. Mm. Bam! You can stop right there. <laughs> with with that team? Yeah. Oh hell yeah! I'll, I'll go. <laughs> I'll be with Houston, man. Houston for sure. Like, oh man, that would be crazy. Me, Swoops, Cool. Yeah, that'd be nasty. Tina. <laughs> Y'all might have went like seven. What? <laughs> you would have had seven of them things. What? The first 10 years of the league, we would have been dominant, <laughs> baby. I mean, yeah. I don't know. We had enough balls. Well, you know, I had to sacrifice some of my game when we had our dynasty. So that ain't nothing like, but you know, everybody would have their moment nasty. get they shine on. Yeah, we would have won like eight in a row. <laughs> For sure. Easy. Easy. Easy word. Um... If you could receive one product for free for the rest of your life, what would it be? <laughs> I, know I know you, you know what I want to say, baby. You know what I want to say. You know what I want to say. You know what I want to say. You, you know what? You know what? That is, fuck it. We gonna do it on here. I would get Lyra Canagar. It's a um, company out in Seattle, Washington. They make little Canagars. That's my thing. Like, you know, it, I mean, cannabis is now like the cool thing to do. Like uh, for people that's going through something. I done gave up knees, ankles, toes, everything, everything to the game. You know what I mean? And I ain't really no pill popper. I don't like taking medication and all that. So definitely in the off season i indulge in in cannabis tac or cbd don't matter to me as long as it give me relief I'm, <laughs> I'm cool like i like the herbal stuff so um yeah if i could get lira lira canagars for the rest of my life, that'll be that'll be you right be on. Set. Wow, I'll be set, baby. <laughs> I have my little hum humidifier, my little case. Woo! <laughs> that'll be me. That'll be me. A little, I don't, well, I don't drink or nothing like that, but I have my little lemon ginger juice from Trader Joe's <laughs> and my Canagar. Ha! I'm ready. Chilling. Chilling. We already straight. know what your retirement is. That, that's my retirement. <laughs> Making clothes, helping the kids in the community, and smoking trees. <laughs> don't bother me. If the WNBA did a three-on-three -three tournament, like Olympic style, mm -hmm. who would you choose to be on your team if you were playing in it from the W? Like any past or present players? Any past or present players. Damn, man, that's only two people I get yeah. to. Yeah, you only get two. God damn, two people. Yep. God damn, why are you gonna put me on the spot like I'm that? I'm telling you, every episode I get somebody with a question. Every episode, somebody's like, damn, this one's actually hard. <laughs> man, man, man. That's that's hard as hell, because I can, 
I'm thinking like, you can oh, do. it's a lot I can do. I'm thinking of old kind of like, you know, Tweety. Mm. You, tweet, you know what I mean? You and the, Tweety on the team. <laughs> Betty Lennox, you know what I mean? Like, I'm thinking like them OGs of the game. But if I, I mean, I'm a, obviously, you, you, you got to go with Big Seal because them post players hard to come by, baby. Mm-hmm. Like, dominant post hard to come by. So I'm, I'm going with my girl there, but it's just that, gu- that other guard I'm trying to figure out because I'm thinking D, Tweety, she, Katie. Like, you need you a shooter. Like, on the kick out. Because I can create, and Katie can just sit out there and just mm-hmm. knock down threes. That was a squad. Wow. But who the killer? Who's the killer of all killers? DT. Yeah. Me, DT, and Big Sim. That would be ridiculous. That would be ridiculous. I might I might take that on some NBA guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they want to come That would be where, rough. Where them Rex and the dudes at? Like, y'all want some of oh, that? Oh, no. You couldn't. That wouldn't even be fair. I'm, I'm to tempted to set some shit up like that. Like, yo, we just going to go to that the wouldn't be fair, the To be honest, that, that really wouldn't be fair. In the offseason? Because pe- especially men, they would underestimate underestimate the hell out of y'all like it's fine I go it's to the fine but i'm saying y'all would like dem- i don't even want to go there it's fine we go to the rec centers all the time like right now it being who i am they go to i go to the rec they don't know who i am and i'm like yo can i get an ups they like nah i got my team lying like a mug like they ain't got no team together like they picking That's dudes that just case. lost off the, the the game before so i'm like all right cool get my little team together and every time the dude who has to uh, pick the team or didn't pick me on their team got to check me. Ha! It's a wrap. Ha! Get out the way. Clear <laughs> out. Let me go to work on this fool real quick. Like, nah. Oh, man. All right, last question. What movie villain do you most identify with and why? What movie? What? Villain. It can be from a cartoon. It can be from a regular movie. A movie villain. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But what she really? I was, uh, you know what? It's like magnificent. You might, this is why we best this friends, is. dog. This is why we best friends. She that's really my a villain, though. I, I mean, technically she was, but she had a good heart. It was, it was tainted by that's, the people. You know what I mean? It was tainted that, by the people, and so in that. She had to defend herself. This is why we best friends, because that was exactly my answer. She had to defend herself. <laughs> she did. They trashed her and took her wings and everything. Everything. Cut her wings. wings and you and the, you don't think she's on. about to be, like, upset after that? Like, you think she's just going to be happy and be living her normal life? No. No, nah, she's going to be better. She's right? going to be salty. She got every right to be. <laughs> but then she made everything right. You know what I mean? Like, she knew what she had did. She made it right. That's what a lot of people don't do in life. Like, yeah. they just continue to go on, walk around with all that hurt and pain and da-da-da-da-da. But, yeah, magnificent. Like, I can relate to her. Like, she mind up business. She was doing nothing. You came over there fucking with her. She had to do what she had to do. And then she like, all right, cool. I got me. I got my, I got my get back. That set the record straight. Don't keep the party going. <laughs> Cool. All right. That's all we got to do for today. So I appreciate you coming out. You really didn't have a choice because I was going to drag you up in here regardless. But thank you for that. <laughs> you know I got your back. Y'all for better support, man. All- yes, support. Watch, like, subscribe, comment. Tell your friends about us. And I will see you guys next week on another episode of Checkup. Up.